Hey guys, I wanted to go over salt because it's so important to meat curing and the differences between the seasoning, the curing, and then what I call the preservation and explain it in a bit more detail. So let's get stuck in. So yesterday I went out and caught some trout, caught four. Uh, two of them were big like breeding hens, so I put them back, but I got a couple of rainbows smallish but good enough and i will be using salt seasoning for it now if you're looking at a percentage of the salt to the weight of the meat it's probably going to be around one percent the equilibrium curing is like the cornerstone of my learning around meat curing so this is like let's call it under two percent is really a 1.8 percent would be considered a seasoning type of on meat. Now, moving up from there, from 1.82% to 5%, then getting into a curing stage. So this is enough salt to get inside, do what they say is binding and diffusion. Um, so it's binding in with the, the water molecules and the proteins and stuff, but too much detail for me. But it's the percentage of salt scientifically you need to inhibit and after 20 years of using these percentages you start to realize this is the truth so if you think about it, a kilogram or uh, a thousand grams of meat to start with you're talking two percent 20 grams three percent 30 grams and then it's about uh, having an equalizing effect putting it in a bag and also on my blog eatcuredmeat.com I've written heaps about equilibrium curing the calculator gets used a lot now you've got this up to I would say it can go up five percent but then when you go full saturation packing it in salt like this keychain thing here this is I would call ten percent of the salt so you've got your seasoning you've got your curing and then you've got your full preservation which can just be caked in salt as well like fully loaded on all sides and then changed out a few times and drawing out and inhibiting it as much as possible uh, for a hundred grams out of a thousand grams to do a full preservation um, and leaving it in there for quite some time this one's like three years old it's obviously a little bit rancid looks a bit funky but to be honest it still smells all right salt pork that's it so it does really come down to this sort of weight versus volume thing with uh, seasoning and curing and preserving we most recipes you find in most cookbooks even most of the ones that I've got pretty much all of them Apart from the ones on salumi charcuterie meat curing are uh, using a teaspoon of this or a cup of that or a tablespoon of that and that's just when you look at when you look at salt and not just the coarseness of it but they have it has different shapes so it's going to fill up a teaspoon or a tablespoon different and it's not a it's not like there's one type of salt and one type of shape but when you're talking about weight then it's all even so you're getting precision ideally all recipes should be in weight when you think about it when it comes to this curing side of it not the seasoning side of it what you're doing this is a bacon it's a bit of a new random recipe i'm trying with cumin and paprika uh, sorry no paprika and chili I just fried some up it was quite yummy actually it's cold smoked as well so the the the, the salt side of it uh it's all about slowing down the water activity inside the meat and once it's done that then it can it means the bacteria struggles to survive in the meat and that leads to the preservation uh i guess it's a bit of a byproduct to the flavor enhancement but because you're losing moisture out of it you're also intensifying the flavor of it so sometimes I use the analogy like roasting 
because you are kind of like losing some moisture when you're roasting as well. So when you're doing curing, you've got curing falls into the dry curing and the uh, wet brining, sometimes called pickling, wet brining, wet curing as well. So having your salt and whatever else in a, in a water um, brine. And so in this brine, you have uh, the difference is that sometimes if you're fully brine curing, you're wanting that penetration to go through. And I've found you have to really inject it, especially with thicker bits. But let's talk about turkey, because um, the old turkey gets roasted a lot and people inject it or they put it in a brine. Now what actually happens, you know, in a brine for a few days or even like five days, all it's doing is really going to hold hold the moisture on the exterior. It's not really going to penetrate very far in unless you're sitting there and injecting that briny solution into it. So when you hit it with the heat in the oven and you roast that turkey and cook it, then it's holding that moisture in so it doesn't dry out. I mean, that's really what it is. It's another way that this salt is used to hold that moisture in. There are other sides to preservation that I'll be doing other videos on. There's a denaturing side of it, which uh, using acidity like lemon juice and vinegar and things, and then smoking as well, cold smoking under 30 degrees Celsius, which is, I'll put the Fahrenheit on here as well, antibacterial and antifungal. And when you cured meats and they're cold smoking, you're kind of giving it a protection as well another form of preservation. I've got an ebook on cold smoking, everything from chocolate to salt to mushrooms to, of course, meat. So I'll put a link to that as well if you're interested. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.